There's a mathematical equation that would take the fastest computer in the world a half a billion years to solve until now. Hello, and welcome to What the What, the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. And today, we're talking about quantum computers. It was just recently, in December of 2020, where scientists in China were able to take that half a billion year equation and do it in 200 seconds. Um, I'm no math doctor, but that seems like quite an improvement. It was probably said best by quantum physicist Fabio Scarino of Sapienza University in Rome when he said, my first impression was, wow. Okay then, man a few words, I guess. <laughs> so how did they do this? How did they take a Dell computer from Best Buy and make it so swole, bro? If you've made it this far in the episode, I hope that you click the subscribe button and maybe share it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I love getting engaged with you. <laughs> so far, us humans, we've been able to create two quantum computers that could defeat this incredible math problem. The first one was in 2019 by Google, and the second one was December 3rd of 2020 in China. The Chinese quantum computer, Zhizeng, uses light and particles and photons. Google's computer, Sycamore, uses superconducting materials on a chip more like a standard computer we know today. So what's so special about Zhizeng? Google was able to solve this in 2019. It seems like the Chinese team was a year late to the party. Well, this Chinese quantum computer is 10 billion times faster than Google's. And I guess the lesson we learned here is that if you're going to show up late to a party, you better be dressed to impress. So how does the Zhizeng computer work? It contains light sources, beam splitters, mirrors, and a uh, hundred photon catching things. Basically, you take a bunch of fancy optical devices and then you shoot them down these railways, kind of like a fancy monorail. So no one a computer can send light around a bunch of mirrors and solve a tough math problem is cool and all, but how does it work and why does it matter? Our typical computers operate on binary, and you've probably heard that word before. It means that information is displayed or gathered in zeros and ones. That's the language of computers. But with quantum computers, they're not zeros and ones. They're both zero and one at the same time, meaning they can calculate multiple possibilities simultaneously, where traditional computers can only do one at a time. And the challenge with computing is that the harder it works and the faster it does stuff, the hotter it gets. And this is why your techie friend that built that gaming computer is so excited about that liquid cooling part that they just installed. Those insane gaming computers create a lot of heat. So cooling it down gives them the best optimal performance. Quantum computers are no exception. In fact, they are calculating so much that they are blisteringly hot and they need to be cooled at negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's colder than the coldest parts of the moon. And that's in space. But you'd already know that if you watched that episode about the moon and the volcanoes. <laughs> so traditionally, these supercomputers or quantum computers have to be in a isolated room that is constantly cooled and, and left at these extremely cold temperatures. She was saying... I don't know how to say that. That computer can perform 100 trillion times faster than any other computer on our planet. And it can do it without needing to be in a super cold room. And that right there is a massive leap forward in computing. But why does it matter? Quantum computers can test new medicines at a molecular level, giving us new medicines that truly solve a problem and do so in a faster amount of time. Does that mean that we might get vaccines faster? Sure. And it might be one of the best vaccines we've ever received. And most scientists agree that quantum computers are the best chance that we have to survive the challenges of the 21st century. With climate change, it can help us find ways to remove carbon from the air. And much like watching hurricane predictions on the news, where you have all these different possible routes, quantum computers could probably predict before we even know that a hurricane has formed letting us know exactly where it's going to hit and what we need to do to take care of ourselves and the planet and batteries. 
Today's batteries lose power too quickly and aren't able to hold a charge that meet our demands, much like in our cars. And the calculations from these quantum computers will help solve this problem, giving us the most efficient batteries we've ever had while having less impact on our planet. And then there's quantum internet, which obviously it's gonna be super fast, but the most important thing is that it would be more secure than anything we've experienced so far. And that is very important as we become a more and more connected society to the digital world. And while the Ji Zing is a massive leap forward, it still has a lot of time before it's a usable product for say the medical industry. It's gonna be 10 to 15 years before we can see these really be utilized to help give us a real benefit in science or technology, which they're kind of the same, aren't they? And it's not gonna be something that you carry around in your pocket. You're not gonna have a quantum iPhone, at least not yet. As always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today?